Welcome back everybody. Two things before we get started. If you can like and subscribe, I'd be greatly, greatly appreciative. The second thing is there are tractor markers all throughout the video. If there's anything specific that you're looking for, go ahead and click on it. But without further ado, let's get right into it. At this point, Anthony Edwards is one of the most exciting young players in the NBA today. He finally has his first signature shoe with Adidas, the AE1. Today, we have the opportunity to review every aspect of the shoe, including the on-court performance. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're gonna start off with the unboxing experience and the unboxing experience with the AE1 is a little bit different than what you would see on other signature athletes first signature shoe. The AE1 forgoes that traditional flip up box that you would normally see on other signature athlete shoe boxes and goes with a more premium slide out drawer box. Inside the drawer box, you actually have a custom tissue paper with the AE logo on there. Now this is something you don't normally see on a first signature shoe and especially at the $120 price point, but I was pleasantly surprised and I'm actually happy to see it. Now from a design perspective, the AE1 is a very unmistakable shoe. To say that it is eye-catching is an understatement just because this shoe stands out from any other shoe on the court. It doesn't look like any other shoe on the court. Starting with these perforations that are like a honeycomb shape. Um, if you have trypophobia, you're probably gonna wanna look away. Obviously these aren't gonna be your type of shoe. But these serve a triple purpose. This is a design aesthetic. This is containment. This is also ventilation. On the upper, you have a somewhat like a ballistic type of mesh. It is a stronger material, obviously meant to contain your foot and things like that. And then on the heel counter, it has a carbon fiber type of print on that plastic heel counter. And then you have the Adidas logo, which is usually in an accent color different than any of the other colors on the actual shoe. This has also been true for any of the other colorways for the AE1s. This colorway particularly dubbed the future, but for all intents and purposes is the All-Star Weekend colorway. Is like a color shifting paint type of thing. So when you're actually tilting it, it comes in like a purple to like a greenish color. It kind of looks like a Japanese beetle shell, which is a, a really cool look. When you move all the way up into the toe area, you have like a 3M reflective toe box. This toe box is very reminiscent of the Yeezy 700 V2. Now moving on from the toe box, you have kind of like a setup of like a half tongue, half booty kind of construction. So your foot kind of fits into the vamp, into the toe box area. And I'm assuming that's more intended for containment and things like that. And then you have the tongue area it has a little bit of give to allow your foot to slip into the shoe itself. Overall, from a design perspective though, the AE1 is super iconic at this point. It is unmistakable. It is immediately recognizable. Um, and I think it's going in the right direction from a design standpoint for Adidas as a brand and then for the AE line as a whole. Now, as I said in the design piece, from a material perspective, there isn't anything premium about the shoe. Um, it has that kind of like a ballistic mesh type of upper. I'm not really sure what it is. It does feel like some kind of a ballistic mesh. You have the structural pieces on the uh, lateral and medial sides. Um, they seem to be more like a rubber foam type of compound. Um, and again, they pull triple duty for ventilation structure and design. Um, otherwise, there really, really isn't a whole lot going on. At $120, I didn't expect premium materials, but what I am getting though is an excellent design at a pretty affordable price. Now, when we talk about weight, we also have to talk about material choices. The material choices kind of come together to make the actual shoe itself. Immediately getting these shoes out of the box, I noticed that they were a little bit heavier than I'm accustomed to, even from the most recent shoes I've tried, like the Harden Volume 8, which I thought was a little bit on the heavier side, coming in at, I think, 17 and a half ounces. But I noticed these were even heavier than those. Uh, playing in them, they felt a little bit heavier than I'm used to. And when I threw them on the scale, they came in at 20.6 ounces or 584 grams. All in all, the AE1 is a pretty hefty shoe. It is something that I noticed on the court. I don't know if it had any impact on my fatigue or stamina or anything like that, but you definitely will notice that these are heavier than you're used to. Um, it may impact you, it may not, but it really is contingent on the person. Now, when it comes to the fit and containment for the AE1, starting with the fit specifically, I wanna say that these fit a little bit long. Um, I had a little bit of room in the toe box at the very end. In terms of width, they actually fit a little bit narrow for a wide footer. If you're a normal sized or a narrow foot person, you're probably gonna have no issues whatsoever, but 
as a wide footer, I did have some pinching on my big toe and on my pinky toe. So on the instep, I had a lot of pinching there, a lot of like pressing in there, just a lot of discomfort. And unfortunately, because of the way the shoe is uh, structured or built, there is no way to alleviate that. There's no laces there to kind of loosen or anything like that. If you have a high end step and you're fitting your foot into this shoe, this is gonna cause some real pinching issues. So if you have an opportunity, um, at this point, these shoes have been pretty limited and hard to get in store. But if you have the opportunity, I would recommend going to a store trying these on just to see how they fit. Over on the containment side in my experiences, this shoe performed extremely well. I had no issues with my foot coming off the footbed, had no issues with heel slip just because you have a bit of a higher collar. But in general, these shoes performed very, very well when it comes to containment. Moving on to the cushioning of the AE1, you have a combination of light strike and jet boost. And when I think of boost, I think of bounciness and responsiveness, energy return and things like that. And what I really got was a lot of bounciness and that normal boost stuff that I'm used to in the heel, and which is probably more for impact protection than anything else. But in the forefoot, it kind of is a low profile cushioning or foam. What it really does though is enhances the court feel. So if you're someone who prioritizes court feel, this is the shoe for you. In my experiences, I do prefer a little bit of cushioning in the forefoot, like a zoom or a thicker boost padding. But in this case, there was a little bit too much cork feel and it was a little bit uncomfortable for me personally. But again, if you're someone who prioritizes cork feel, this is the shoe for you. Now, when it comes to the traction for the AE1, they were absolutely fantastic. It features a sort of modified wide herringbone pattern that in my experiences, just gripped the floor no matter what the circumstances were. I had no issues with dust getting in there, never actually had to wipe the shoe or anything like that. If you're looking for traction or you're prioritizing traction, these are absolutely incredible. Now, when it comes to the traction durability, I don't know if you're gonna have a lot of longevity with the traction itself. If you're playing on outdoor courts, on indoor courts, you shouldn't have any issues. The rubber compound does seem to be a bit on the thicker side, and I think that's what adds to the weight of the shoe overall. But if you're playing on outdoor courts, the rubber does seem to be a little bit softer. So you may see that traction kind of run down pretty quickly. But if you're playing on indoor courts, you shouldn't have any issues with durability or longevity. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the AE1, it's a very easy shoe to recommend just because of one, the price point coming in at $120, you get a good mixture of a lot of different technologies. You get good cushioning, great traction, great containment, um, and it's just a great design overall. Um, it's a great start for Anthony Edwards and his signature line with Adidas um, from the marketing push that they had from the very start all the way to how kind of limited they are right now, kind of creates that frenzy and that fervor for the shoe. But what you're gonna see in the future is just a continuation or an evolution of the shoe. And I hope that they continue to go this direction where they're kind of thinking outside the box in terms of what a signature shoe should look like and kind of keep pushing the envelope and maybe possibly start to incorporate premium materials or things like that. It doesn't necessarily need it, but again, it's, it's just one of those things where you wanna see Adidas and Anthony Edwards and that design team continue to push the envelope. Now, when I posted my Harden Volume 8 review, a lot of people were asking, would I go with the AE1 or would I go with the Harden Volume 8? And after playing in the uh, AE1 and knowing that I'm not a big fan of the cushioning setup just because it's not as bouncy as I would prefer, I would definitely go with the Hard and Volume 8 just because of how comfortable they are and you know you get a little bit more padding, a little bit more cushioning in the forefoot. Again, if you're someone who prioritizes court feel and low profile cushioning, you're probably gonna wanna go with the AE1. If you're someone who prioritizes a little bit more cushioning, a little bit more bounce in that forefoot area, you're definitely gonna want to go with the Hard and Volume 8. But that just about wraps it up for this video. If there's anything you want to know about the AE1 or anything that I missed, please leave a comment. If you liked this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a good day.